She didn't have to give a paper. I said, just come, just share your presence with us. I am speaking, of course, of Professor Darlene Clark Hine, a leading historian of the African-American experience and a pioneer of African-American women's history. She is a board of trustees, professor of African-American studies and professor of history at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. She is the former John A. Hanna Professor of History at Michigan State. She is currently the chair of the Department of African American Studies at Northwestern. She is the past president of the organization, one of the very few presidents of uh, black women of color who has served as a president of a national uh, a national organization, and she has been the president of the Organization of American Historians. She has also served as the president of the St Southern Historical Association, which I don't know, for many of you, I mean, just being president of the Southern, <laughs> the Southern Historical Association is a milestone in itself. I cannot list the number of uh, her publications because we'd be here for a long time, but she has done some of the most pioneering work on African American women. She's written on black women nurses. She's written on the white primary in Texas. She's written on black professionals. She's written uh, many, uh, one of her seminal articles. I always use this as a piece with my graduate students because I say, you know, you don't have to write real long stuff <laughs> all the time. But her article on black women and dissemblance, you know, it's one of those think pieces that make you think, and um, it's one of those, well, just in case you all, you know, just, I, I'm not sure, and I really don't want to do a whole lot of research on this, but here's what I think about it, and yet, what her thoughts about the semblance um, and the history of African American women, um, her thoughts are just absolutely incredible. Let me say this. The Organization of American Historians has a, recently adopted a prize, and the Darlene Clark Hine Award will be presented by the Organization of American Historians um, and it will be for the best book in African American women's history, African American women and gender history. All right. Um, and that will be for the first time presented this year? Next year in 2010. Um, my, it has always been. my sense that if we definitely want to stay around, we have to institutionalize. And um, Darlene, in and of herself, is an institution. <laughs> so without further delay, let me introduce the chair of this history session, Darlene Clark Hine. Deborah Gray White, and I am, you know, so happy that you are also an institution. So that makes two of, two of us, and we're not old and creaky yet. I think we're quite dynamic with many more years to come. And one of the things that I want to say um, to Deborah is that this has been an absolutely amazing experience, and this conference is incredibly important because we don't, as academicians, like women academicians, women of color academicians, we rarely get the chance to assemble from all the different disciplines and to talk and discuss our work and our experiences across the boundaries, the disciplinary boundaries that we need to 
I'll work very hard to shatter even more so. And so for you to put your resources and your effort and to pull together all your graduate students to work on this and your colleagues across Rutgers University, including the president who ponied up a lot of the money, to support this kind of activity, I think we need to give you a standing ovation. Please, come on. Classic Deborah fashion, that's enough now. <laughs> but I also want to um, pay homage to another black woman feminist, someone who means a great deal uh, to me and to a number of us in this audience, and that's Stanley James. And I want to pay homage to Stanley James because just last week, <coughs> Stanley called together a black woman and women of color uh, summit. And it was called Madam, the Madam President Summit, Madam President Summit, colon, Women of Color and Leadership in Learned Societies. And when we got there, I realized that Stanley had seen a phenomena that most of us were oblivious to because we're so often caught up in our own particularities that we don't see broader pictures. And what she discovered was that in the last decade, there had been two black women presidents of the Organization of American Historians and the Southern Historical uh, Association, that's Nell Irving Painter, myself, a black woman president of the American Sociological Association, um, Patricia Hill Collins, right? and a black woman president of the American Political Science Association, Diane Pender Hughes, another black woman president of the African uh, Studies Association, I mean, and Pearl Rob Robinson, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of these, we've all been presidents of these organizations, and we didn't know, or it hadn't penetrated our consciousness. And so she brought us together, and, and oh, she, I'm looking right at her, president of the National Women's Studies Association, Beverly Guy Sheftall, who's there. Um, and so we're, we're all talking then about our experiences over the last few years, the last, well, two decades, and uh, how we came to be in these organizations and assume these leadership positions, and one of the operative words, did we transform? Were we transformed? And in, and in many ways, uh, how was our, were our respective disciplines transformed? In other words, what did it mean? What was the significance of this phenomenon? And what does black women's leadership then purport for the, remain, for the rest of the larger academic uh, community. And it was a very profound, profound gathering. And I just want to thank Stanley James for seeing something that the rest of us had not seen. And she too went to her president and he had to pony up the money to bring us all to Tempe, Arizona. So I want to just acknowledge that. But I wasn't brought here. My instructions were very clear not to give a talk but to introduce, <laughs> to introduce. Um, what do these young, dynamic, brilliant scholars have in common? As, president, uh, as chair of the Department of African American Studies at Northwestern, whenever we put anybody up for tenure and promotion, and in the history department, we have to identify benchmark scholars. So that's the first thing. They're all benchmarks. In other words, their monographic work, their articles, and their service and activism in their respective uh, organizations and institutions 
have been so impressive and so remarkable that all other junior faculty have to measure, have to be measured against these scholars. In other words, if someone wants to come in up for tenure, and I just went through this, I was asked, who is the benchmark in African American studies for this young, brilliant sociological uh, professor of sociology? Rhonda Williams. Rhonda Williams. In history, assistant associate professors going up for tenure. Who's a benchmark? Brenda Stevens. In women's studies, black women's studies, black women's history, who's a benchmark? Wanda Hendricks. These are, for all of you undergraduates, graduate students, and assistant professors who don't have tenure yet, but will be coming to that status, your professors, your chairs, your mentors will be seeking letters of recommendation from people like Rhonda and Brenda and Wanda. And so, you're at this meeting. Who should you be getting to know? <laughs> Who should you be rubbing up against? <laughs> Who should you be talking to? And if you want a couple of extra names, there's Stephanie Evans. Black educational history, you might want to, Mashonda, you know, rub up against Stephanie Evans. <laughs> After Tiffany's book come out next year, Tiffany Gill, some of you young assistant professors and graduate students, make a point of knowing Tiffany Gill, benchmark professors. They epitomize excellence. So now, in the order of their appearance, Rhonda Williams. Rhonda Williams is a tenured associate professor of history at Case Western Reserve University. She has a secondary appointment in the Mandel School of Applied and Social Sciences and is program, for, uh, and is program faculty for the Ethnic Studies and Women's Studies program. It's she initiated and directs Case Western Reserve uh, University's postdoctoral fellowship in African American studies. And in 2008, Dr. Williams was honored by History News Network as a top young historian and was appointed as director of Case Western Reserve University's Social Justice Strategic Alliance by the university president. Her Let me get this right. The major book title, um, hmm, here it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> Rhonda, you'll have to tell them about all that work you did on the welfare of women. Uh, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> and the precise title of your award winning book. I'll put in the shameless plug. Yeah, I do know that it won the Association of Black Women Historians Prize for the best book published in 2008. And she received her PhD from the University of Pennsylvania in 1998. Mary Frances Berry was her major professor. Wanda Hendricks. Wanda Hendricks is an associate professor in the Department of History at the University of South Carolina, and she received her PhD degree from uh, Purdue University in 1990, and I was her major professor. So you know she's smart. <laughs> I don't mean to embarrass you, Wanda. Wanda was the one who spearheaded the whole campaign to raise $52,000 to fund the Darlene Clark Hine Prize, the Organization of American Historians. She didn't know that such activities usually involve a committee. Uh, 
so she did all the work by herself. But Deborah and I had her back, as did Nell Irving Painter. And so she accomplished that feat within 14 months. Incredible. Um, Wanda's first book was, was published uh, in 1998, and it's called Gender, Race, and Politics in the Midwest, Black Club Women in Illinois. She is now working on a biography of Fanny Beria Williams, one of the most influential African-American female intellectuals and social welfare reformers of the late 19th and early 20th century. Wanda has mined the archives of black women's history like no other young junior scholar that I know. And so I am very proud of the work that she is doing and will continue to do. And Brenda Stevenson. Brenda Stevenson received her PhD in 1990 from Yale University, and John Blassingame was her major professor. So here you have second generation, John Blassingame, Mary Frances Berry, Darling Clark Hine. These, this is um, a panel that represents the best of that generation that we train and who will, of course, provide leadership for the next generation. Uh, Brenda's amazing book um, won the Gustavus Myers Outstanding Book Prize, and it was entitled Life in Black and White, Family and Community in the Slave South, published in 1996. She's been chair of her department. She has won Mellon, uh, Carter G. Woodson, Smithsonian Institution uh, fellowships, and she has trained a number of African American women historians. And I think the thing that most endears uh, her uh, to Deborah and myself was she did something quite remarkable. Deborah Ray White's Aren't I a Woman book has been out for over 20 years. Uh, 1985, and it was a foundational text mm -hmm. in the history of slavery. Right? And Brenda Stevenson brought together all these historians, two, three generations of us, out to um, California to commemorate the publication of Deborah Gray White, the 20th anniversary of Deborah Gray White's book, and then edited a special issue of the Journal of African American History of the articles and essays published uh, as testimonial to how great that book uh, remains. So uh, except for messing up Rhonda's title, which she will correct, I think that uh, you're in a very, you're in, you're in a good place this morning and uh, you're going to enjoy very much the new scholarship by this very distinguished group of African American women historians.